Long, long time ago, Sadhguru had told my mother that he wants to take a boat, like a small fishing boat, and travel to Africa. Because there are uh, fishing boats that used to make that trip and there are catamarans that do these things. He wanted to travel for six months. So being in the ocean, being out in this expanse of water is definitely something that I thought he would be, you know, excited and he would be able to enjoy and not just be focused on event after event, interview after interview. How wrong I was about those two and a half days. So when we got to Riyadh, it was so unreal for us because it was just desert everywhere and I personally have never seen something like that. We were all in a bus and in that bus we're all sitting and we can barely see outside the windscreen. And we're looking out and thinking, oh, everything looks a little hazy. It almost looks like mist, you know, like an early morning fog kind of feeling. Only when you step out of the bus do you realize that it's not fog, it's dust, it's sand, it's like fine particles of sand. We see this sandstorm happening around us and we don't know how Sadhguru is going to ride the bike through this. I don't think any of us really considered what all he was breathing in, what all he was swallowing when he's riding the when he's riding the motorcycle. And I think really I only realized that when we got on the boat. So we took a boat from Oman to Jamnagar and that was what I thought at least would be like a three day break for him or a two and a half day break for him. So we get on the boat and we're there for some time, we meet the whole crew, the captain, everybody. That first day we were all okay and then the second day in the morning when we saw him he was not looking so well and I asked him have you slept and all of that. He said I'm fine, I'm fine and then he started coughing. And when he spat it out it was like, it's like balls of sand and mud in the phlegm, like not, not just little bit, you know, some dust in the phlegm, it wasn't like that. It, you could see like particles of sand and mud that was coming out of his lungs. I never even knew that that much sand can go into somebody's lungs and that it can come out like this. Seeing him cough up these, you know, balls of mud, I don't know, has something happened to his lungs? Is it, uh, you know, is it like a serious thing? Do we need to get a doctor to look at his lungs? Like, what, what is the situation? I don't even know. All I know is he's coughing, he's losing his voice, he's not able to speak for more than a few minutes at a time and even when he speaks, he speaks kind of softly. And then we're trying to check, are you okay? Can we get you some medicine? Can we do some? He says, no, no, I'm fine. He's asking me, are you okay? Uh, I'm okay, you leave this, you go check, make sure everybody else has eaten, make sure everybody else is okay. And I'm looking at him, he's so weak and he's sitting down, he's not able to stand up comfortably. It was unreal kind of to see him in that state. But still in all of that, he is not saying anything. He is just saying, I need some time to rest, I have some writing to do. Um, I'm okay, I'm okay. But you can see that he's not okay. <coughs> because he was running such high temperature and because he was coughing and he couldn't speak. We didn't know how unwell or how well he was because he won't say anything to us. I realized that he had a very high temperature. Every time he coughs up, if we give him a tissue or something, there's particles of sand in the tissue. So on the second day, we went out on the deck. And you know, on the, in the boat, that corner, that tip, we had placed a small stool for him to sit and the video team wanted to take some nice videos and things like that. So he went there and he sat and he was sitting on a stool and he was there for some time. And uh, maybe for the first time, I heard him say, I, you know, I, I need to go. He got up, he kind of, he held the rail all the way and he walked back inside.
and he went to his room. It was it was a little unreal to see that he needed the support of something else just to walk, you know, that 10 or 15 feet just to walk that distance. He needed the support of the rail to, you know, make it back into the room. I was so uncomfortable with just letting him sleep alone in the room that I went and slept on the couch in his room because I didn't know in the middle of the night if he gets up and something happens, nobody will be there to do anything and it's a ship and the ship is rolling from side to side. We were rolling 30, 32 degrees almost back and forth. It was a rough journey for all of us, but for him particularly because he was already unwell and you can't really rest because you know your body is constantly in motion. <coughs> and he would cough and he would cough and we'd say, are you okay, would you need this? He's no, no, I'm fine and he'll take a minute and then he will continue doing whatever he needed to do. It was, uh, it was very difficult to see. Sadhguru said, why don't you have the crew come together? We'll include them in the movement. We'll talk to them about safe soil and everything. So we got the crew together in their meeting area, which is downstairs. And he sat and he started talking about safe soil and he just started to lose his voice. <coughs> He would say something and then he would cough and he would say, excuse me, <clears throat> and then he would say it again. And he was not able to get full sentences out in the way that we are so used to seeing him at events. Um, because he was coughing, he lost his voice, it was, it was difficult to see. So after he spoke for some time, then he said, why don't you play, play the video first, then we'll speak again. He kind of needed to take those few minutes of a break because he was not able to speak for a long time continuously. Somewhere when we were in the boat, I was really thinking, it doesn't matter if he wants to do a hundred things, the rest of us need to make sure that he doesn't because it's, it's inhuman, it's not superhuman, it's inhuman the kind of conditions that he was going through. We reached the port in Jamnagar and he just stepped off the boat and he just went into the crowd, spoke there and when he coughs he apologizes, I'm sorry, I'm just a little... And he speaks, then I thought from there we're going straight to wherever we were supposed to stay. And there was a naval event after that. He spoke there, there also when he's speaking you can hear, you know, his voice is not the way it sounds, usually it's very rough and he's... <clears throat> and then he'll speak again. Or he'll cough and he'll say, excuse me, I'm very sorry. Uh, almost apologetic that, that he's not well, uh, without actually saying that he's not well. From there we went and they had a big welcome. It was a long event for another one hour, one and a half hours. He's speaking continuously. It was incredible to see, but it was also a little little painful to see because we had seen how he was the previous two, three days and all we wanted was for him to rest for some time. 